Today I want to talk about a camera that I have been using now for well over two years, the Fuji X-E3. Just as a quick disclaimer, all the videos and photos that are in this free view are shot using the Fuji X-E3 unless stated otherwise. Before I was using this camera, I was using the Sony A6500. As some of you that have been subscribed to this channel for a while now may already know I am pretty much a full-on Canon user and also a Canon fanboy at that. The reason being is that I had started my photography journey very early on with the Canon cameras since the very first EOS film camera came out. So I pretty much built myself around the Canon ecosystem and I'm so comfortable with the whole ecosystem too as I find Canon gear just works for me and my style of photography and more recently photography too. But recently over the past five years or so I must say I have started feeling a bit left out when so many people out there adopted the mirrorless world and I noticed that there were so many wonderful features that I was missing out, namely an EVF. Although I have to admit, coming from a DSLR, I really didn't enjoy early EVFs as I found them to be very laggy and not really great in general in terms of resolution. After using the Sony a6500 for a while, I was always somewhat not happy about the photos I was able to snap with it. And it ended up being used more for videos instead. And I was on a search to look for a proper hybrid camera that can snap pretty good photos and also videos. So when I finally decided to sell my a6500, I made a firm decision that the next camera I get has to be something roughly the same size of the a6500 because I need this new camera to snap great photos and also videos too. I needed the camera to be light because I wanted to be able to use smaller lenses with it too. So after much digging around and looking at specs and reviews, I finally decided that I wanted to get the Fuji X-T3. The main reason behind this decision has to be that I wanted my secondary camera system to be something that I would enjoy using when I wanted to just have fun shooting photos and videos. And when I looked into the Fujifilm camera system, I felt it ticked all the boxes that I was looking for in a secondary camera. For one, it looks gorgeous. Now, there's no denying that. And two, it just has this wonderful tactile quality about it that I feel is somewhat lacking in many modern cameras. I feel like many modern cameras these days, especially the ones that don't have many dials and buttons, somehow kind of feel a little sterile while using them. Although I have to admit that they definitely get the job done. I mean, despite being less tactile, I wouldn't want to sell my EOS R5 or EOS R despite it being slightly slightly less tactile compared to the Fujifilm camera system. But there are definitely times when I do want to pick a camera up and I do want to feel like I had a more heavy hand into making a shot what it is. And for times like that, that is when I tend to pick up my Fuji X-C3 to just go out and have fun shooting and be totally immersed in the process of making a shot. I guess for me, I've gotten to the stage in my photography passion where I feel that a camera needs to be something that also gets you excited to pick it up every single time. And the minute you have this urge in you where you feel a camera may feel a little bit of a burden to carry around that's probably when you should pause and perhaps remember what first got you excited in photography in the first place for me my canon systems are always going to be my first choice when i do need something that can thoroughly get the job done when i need great autofocus or when i need to shoot certain specific scenarios the thing that drew me most of all to the xt3 was when i first saw the colors and images it was able to produce the coolest thing about fujifilm camera is the fact that you can use film simulations when you shoot videos and photos. So you can actually bake in a particular look that you like into your shot and that can sometimes be such a lifesaver when you just want to get quick beautiful results. And the fact that you can convert a raw file into a JPEG with one of those film simulations on camera applied to it after the photo has been taken is simply amazing in my opinion. However, please note that the film simulation conversion feature is only a available for raw photos you snap and not for videos. With videos, the film simulation you choose will pretty much be baked in. However, you can still opt to view the video in a film simulation as a preview, but record the images in a flatter F-log profile if you wish to and grade the footage later on in post, which is quite useful. In terms of video quality, I think the video that the X-T3 captures is simply amazing. Even the HD recording alone is perhaps one of the cleanest and most detailed HD quality I have seen of any camera I have ever used. Apparently the 1080p video in this camera is downsampled from 3K and for the 4K video this camera is downsampled from its full 6K sensor readout and looking at the video 
shadows that comes up from this camera, I seriously am not surprised as it's super sharp and clean. One of the highlights of this camera too has to be the ability to shoot in 10 bit internally and also the ability to shoot in 4K 60p. At the time it was launched and even till this day, those are still quite impressive specs. Anyway, back to photos. Photo snap on the Fuji X-T3 has this very nice organic quality to it in my opinion and that's very much the same feeling I get from my Canon cameras. The colors that the Fuji produces in my opinion were just miles way better than the stuff I used to get from my Sony a6500 and because of that I finally felt excited to shoot photos again on my secondary camera system. Another disclaimer I have to make is that I am using my Fuji X-T3 mainly with cheap manual lenses. The only Fuji lens that I own currently is the kit lens as I bought the camera specifically as a bundle. Speaking of kit lenses, I think Fuji hands down has the best kit lens out there in my opinion. For a kit lens, I think it's simply amazing. I mean, how often do you get a kit lens having a widest aperture of f2.8 all the way up to f4 and on top of that, it has literally silent autofocus and the continuous autofocus in video with this lens is just sublime. The other thing I love about the Fuji X-T3 is that I never really had the feeling like I was struggling using it at any time. The menus were quite easy to understand. The ergonomics and the handling of the camera is good and easy too. There were no real issues in general that I could really point out that made me hate using the Fuji X-T3. It was nothing like the A6500, which always felt to me, based on my style of shooting, a little bit of a struggle to use, especially when it came to setting up the camera. With my Fuji X-T3, it just felt natural using it compared to my a6500 for some reason and I guess that's why I find myself more and more drawn into picking this camera up just to casually shoot every now and again. Of course it would be great if this camera did have IBIS however I don't really mind not having it because at least I do have my EOS R5 that does have IBIS and my X-T3 is more of a casual shooter so I guess I can live with that. So what's my conclusion? What do I really think about the Fuji X-T3 after using it for so long? Well to me I think the Fuji X-T3 is really a fun and great little camera and it's one of those cameras that really gets me excited to pick up and shoot with. One of the reasons behind this has also got to be because it looks so cool and retro and different from everything else that I've used before this but it's definitely not just skin deep. I really feel that the images that is able to be captured with this camera has character and soul and I think any camera out there that can get you inspired to pick it up and get excited shooting again then it's definitely worth having a second look in my opinion. I I know the Fuji X-T3 isn't perfect and it has its little quirks here and there, but who cares? There isn't a perfect camera out there, but there is definitely a camera that's perfect for you. But I guess one of the big important takeaways from all this is that how a camera makes you feel is just as important as how good the specs are on the camera in my opinion. So if a camera has lousy specs, who really cares? It's about how you feel about the camera. Cause often than not, chances are you will be picking up the camera that gives you the most fun. You Using. Right, I guess I don't want this video to be super long and technical because the whole reason I wanted to make this video is just to share with you guys why I love the Fujifilm X-T3 so much. I know you can find more technical videos out there, but here's just my take on what I think about the camera after using it for almost two years now. So if you did enjoy this short review, please do give me a like for all those YouTube algorithms to start working for me. Also, I've left links for all the gears that I use to make these videos down in the description below. So do check them out. And also, if you would like to buy me a cup of coffee, I did leave a link to that too down below in the description. Right then, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.